Dr. B here with Demystifying the DSM, and this video is specifically kind of on that cluster of other depressive disorders, which I'm going to include for all of us who experience depression, what can we do about that? So the next several pages in the DSM, you know, talks about substance or medication-induced depression. Again, these anything that uh, crosses the blood-brain barrier, uh, illegal drugs as well as um, even cannabis can cause uh, depressive symptoms because it decreases neurotransmission. And um, and then there is uh, depressive disorders due to medical conditions. I talk about this in the bipolar series, just making sure that we're looking at the whole picture um, when someone is coming in with, with depressive symptoms. But we all experience depressed mood, or many of us experience depressed mood, and me included. And so what do I do? I personally uh, believe strongly in cognitive behavioral therapy. So if you're in therapy with somebody, please talk to your therapist about using cognitive behavioral therapy. Learn the mentally strong method. This is a cognitive behavioral approach that you can learn to do on yourself. And it's these four elements. The first one is mapping out you know that depressed mood what's making me depressed right now and we can all list those right but what's made me depressed in the past what has uh, made me depressed in my childhood and how does this impact my spiritual relationship these are the four questions we always ask because we can often talk about what's going on in our life right now that's making us depressed but if you ask those previous life questions you will actually bring up a pattern of your, what's going on in your life and what makes you depressed or contributes to your depression. And oftentimes, it's that internal dialogue. And so in the Mentally Strong Method, we have 10 categories, one of which is your negative self-talk. And that really, really contributes to depression. If you heard someone, if you took your negative thoughts, right, and then you heard your child saying that to themselves, or would you say that to your child? That's what I always ask. It's like, why would you talk to yourself in a way that you would never say those things to somebody else? And you are with yourself all of the time. So you are constantly, or hopefully not constantly, but you are feeding this internal dialogue of negative uh, self-talk. And so I challenge you, if you're struggling with depression, I guarantee you there's some negative self-talk in there. Um, there's 10 other categories and, and you may need to actually learn the whole method to, to kind of figure out where those things go. But that negative self-talk is a good place to start. You've got to reframe that. You've got to talk to yourself in a positive way. You've got to learn to love yourself. One of the things that I've been doing recently is just telling myself, I love myself. I love myself. And I'm even getting a little teared up saying it because it's it's hard because sometimes I know there's so many things I don't like. There's so many things that I can say are wrong with me. Um, but it, that doesn't matter. I'm not talking about your your strengths and your weaknesses. You know, just like your child, you love your child for their strengths and weaknesses. We need to love ourselves as well. And so I challenge you to change that internal dialogue and begin to love yourself and tell you, tell yourself that you love yourself um, because you deserve to be happy.